Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today I'm going to work on adding tails to lures I've already built. I'm going to retrofit uh, uh, sort of fiber tails on these lures. But you know, it, it occurs to me that a lot of you guys are new. Uh, a lot of folks are new to the channel and I just suppose I haven't done a uh, channel intro in a while. So my name is Francisco. Most of my friends call me Franco. I'm a civil engineer. I'm licensed uh, in Florida. My technical background is mostly aerospace and mechanical. Uh, my professional background has been in materials testing and instrumentation on machinery. I have a background and training in uh, uh, sailboat hull design and I have a degree in uh, underwater technology which is essentially uh, commercial diving operations and I was a deep sea diver for a while. So I got a really broad spectrum of experience and interest. I started making lures probably uh, like eight years ago really seriously and have really fallen in love with the technical aspect, the creative aspects and catching fish with something you make yourself. I make videos because I do this anyway and I've really enjoyed uh, sort of video editing uh, and learning that. Not that I'm good at it but it's fun. So the part of this whole YouTube thing that I really enjoy is the community. I really love that I get a lot of feedback. A lot, I get lots of folks who give me good, uh, good feedback, who, who like my stuff. Other folks who give me sort of creative negative feedback, which I'm totally cool with. And one of the criticisms I get is that I overthink everything. I do everything the hard way. Uh, there are lots of ways to do things. A lot of them have already been kind of established. And, you, and if you're a lure maker, you probably know uh, most of the common ways to do things. I like to kind of reach out and try new stuff uh, with either hinges or finishes or uh, just the shapes of lures and the way they're weighted and materials that you use to make the lures. And while I'm doing all that I just I, I enjoy sharing it and I get a huge kick out of when you guys send me uh, something that you made with a technique that I used uh, or that I, I introduced you to and uh, it just, it, to me, that's just awesome. All right, enough talk. Let's get to what we're doing today. Okay, here's a lure that I call uh, the pan belly. It's sort of a panfish shaped uh, lure. It's a twitch bait, swim bait, and I use it both in salt and fresh water. I've been making them for uh, probably a year and a half. I, I did a full design and build on this, and I'll go ahead and put a link here uh, so you guys go check it out. But today I want to add a tail. Now my original design uh, uh, included a slot uh, on the very back. The tail hook is uh, kind of below the middle here and that's just so I could get a tail in there and I stopped putting them in there because it was so difficult but I came up with a way to make a tail that's really quick and simple. I put one in here. Let's go ahead and cut this one out and take a look and see what it's going to look like. All right, so if you can't tell, there's uh, an entire fan of these little fibers in there, and I'm going to be cutting off probably 80%. You can see uh, that's the outer edge of that uh, fanned out of, of fiber packet, I guess we can call it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut right around this inside uh, shape. I just drew something I thought would look good. Uh, let's see what it's going to come out like. All right, let's pull the tape off. Now I've got it glued in there uh, with some UV resin uh, that I use as glue. So you could you could use just about any glue you're comfortable using. Um, you know, two part epoxy, whatever, gorilla, gorilla glue, super glue, whatever you feel comfortable using. So that doesn't look too bad. I think I need to give it a little bit of trimming here. It's not quite. Uh, as neat as I thought it was going to come out, uh, these scissors aren't very sharp. So let me go ahead and neaten it up a little bit and then we'll move on to the next stage. All right, that's not too bad. I got to work on my scissor skills. Okay, so I plan to do these other two and I'm also going to do this guy. This is that big uh, crankbait with the double pin hinge. Uh, it's kind of like a nunchucks. <laughs> it folds up. I don't know. It's got a very weird action. Uh, I'm going to put a tail on it. Why not? So here's the little trick that I discovered. And this is what I think has made it a little easier for me to do this. So what I do is I take one of these throwaway brushes. 
uh, that you can get from Harbor Freight or just about anywhere. I use them um, as disposable brushes uh, to put two-part resin clear coats on. What you do is you just get a hold of this edge and sort of open up this handle. I'm making it look a lot harder than it really is. And then when you open it up, the brush falls out and it falls out pretty much in one piece. Uh, there'll be a couple of loose hairs. At this point, I like to thin it out a little bit before I fan it out. Uh, so I'll pull a couple of pieces off uh, that probably I won't need. I don't need it that heavy. So there you go. I pulled about uh, probably a third of it off. Now you notice it's got uh, some kind of adhesive on there, a little bit of glue. And you just grab, grab it by the little glue ball and squeeze it and give it a good hard squeeze and then it, it fans out really nicely and uniformly like so give it a good squeeze and then right there you can just take tape you lay your brush down on the tape fold it over it and you just kind of gingerly fold it uh, before you get to the fibers there and run it across the fibers I missed a little bit and I always leave enough in there that I know I can get it into the body of the lure now I'm gonna have to cut a slot so let me get the Dremel tool so this is one of my favorite lures uh, it's one that I put the 3d foil scales on and if you haven't seen the process I'll go ahead and put a link so you can go check out the video of how I do it so to get started here I'm gonna cut a slot right here uh, and I'll start with a disc and then I'll move on to another tool The slot kind of positions the location, and now I'm going to put this other pin grinder uh, to get a little deeper cut. That's pretty good. So remember, if you're doing this with a wooden lure, you might want to seal the inside after you've cut a slot. Just to keep it from absorbing water, this is all resin, so I don't really have to worry about it. Let's go put tail on it. All right, let's see if this is gonna fit well in here. And it looks like it'll work. I just gotta get some glue on that. I'll start off by getting a little glue on the slot. And when I push it in there, it'll kind of ooze out. And then I'll spread it out uh, through the fibers. Now I'm gonna take it over to the UV light. Now we need to get a bunch more glue on there. All right, that feels pretty good. Uh, now what I like to do is just sort of hand draw a, a shape, but you can take uh, and do an outline of your lure, like I did here, and then draw a, a shape that you think would go well with that lure shape. And then you can just cut this out and, and trace it on to uh, your piece of tape there. So let's go ahead and do it that way with this one. And if you use a sticky note, it'll kind of adhere itself and stay there easily. And there you go. So hopefully these scissors are a little sharper. All right, let's uh, do the reveal here. Let's pull this tape off. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty cool. All right. That's pretty cool. Now I think we're ready for the big guy. Let's go ahead and cut a slot in this thing. And I've already got a tail prepped for it right here. And we just need to come up with a shape. I might just leave it one big giant fan. Wouldn't that be cool looking? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's play around with a shape. So this is supposed to be a Spanish mackerel, uh, at least the paint job. And that's a Spanish mackerel or a rendering of one. And that's what a Spanish mackerel tail looks like. Uh, maybe we do that. Let's do a fork tail. Let's see what that's going to look like. How's that? Let's see what it would look like on, the, on this thing. Um, that's going to look pretty cool. All right, here goes nothing. 
He, when you're a lure maker, you gotta kinda be courageous. And remember, you can always make another one. Pretty happy with that slot. Uh, didn't butcher it, that's kinda good. And then this will slip in there, hopefully, pretty easily. I hope. Come on. There it is. That's going to look kind of cool. Let's glue that in. Little by little. I'm going to have to take this uh, slowly so I can make sure I can adhere all those little fibers because I don't want the outside ones stuck and then the inside ones just pulling out. All right, uh, now comes the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and cut this craziness out of here. All right, now it's just a matter of pulling this tape off, see how, how it came out. All right, I think it's gonna look pretty cool after a little bit of trimming. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. I wonder what it'll look like in the water. Now, I've got one more experiment I wanna do, and that is using one of these bigger ones, since they have sort of a softer um, bristle. Let's try doing the same thing. I'm gonna pull this collar off. Hopefully these bristles have the same kind of glue on them. I can separate some out, give them the same sort of spreading squeeze, and see if we can't do the same trick. Here we go. All right, this is what I was hoping. I think they're glued together, but there is glue here. Pull out a clump, and let's see if it'll work, if we get the same kind of effect. Yeah, there you go. It's just a little too thin on that one. Let's, uh, let's, let's get a piece that's got a little more bristle density here. And try it again. There we go. The beauty of that is that everything is coming to this side. The, the bristles aren't crisscrossing. So you get a nice natural fan look. And then you just do the same thing. So now I can use this uh, fan tail and cut a slot into this one and we'll put this one on. This ought to be cool. All right, I cut the slot and I've got this thing slid in there. I'm just gonna glue it in and then we'll do another cut. I've done it in a shape that's a little less pointy, a little less cut out uh, and just has a very subtle sweep uh, and hopefully it'll look natural. All right, let's pull this tape off. Oh, that looks really nice. Look at that. Little blonde tail, looking pretty good. All right, well, I've made a mess. I'm gonna be cleaning up for a while, uh, but I'm pretty happy with the results. I'm gonna have to try to get some underwater shots with this thing now that it has this tail. And I'm pretty happy with the retrofit of these tails. I think they look pretty cool. And I think because these lures are so short, they're really twitchy. I think these tails are going to settle down the action and give it a little more of a glide and a little more of a swim. So with that said, thanks for watching. I hope this stuff was uh, reasonably interesting to you guys. And maybe you picked up a little tip. And if nothing else, it gave you a little courage to go back and retrofit uh, lures that you've already made uh, with things that maybe you've come up with lately. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay inside, wear a mask outside, be a good citizen and stay healthy. I'll catch you on the next video. Yeah.